Hey everybody, and welcome to another video from Electronic Armory. In this video, we continue our series on creating a full stack application from back end to front end with accompanying iOS and Android applications. This application will be the basis for our learning management system or LMS for the Armory. Today, what we're going to do is customize the front end a little bit. We're going to take this home page and make it look a little bit nicer and more branded to our product, as well as hide and show functionality based on the user's role. So if you remember from our last video, we were able to log in and create entities and all that other stuff. However, we don't want the users to be able to do that. We just want the admin to be able to do that. And so today's video, we're gonna show you exactly how to do that, as well as customize the HTML and we're going to enforce the role on the front end and the back end. Simply hiding the button or showing different functionality is not enough. We need to enforce that on the back end because any user can execute some JavaScript or some other application to talk to our back end and get the same functionality. So what we're going to do is we're going to have security at rest and we'll show you what that looks like in a second. So stick around. All right, so if you remember from our last video, we have three different services set up for us. We have the Docker Compose, and that is running the Gateway Discovery Service console. And next we have one of our services for our backend, and you can see that this one is at 8081. And then we have our front end gateway, which already has some logging in here because I loaded up the web page, uh, and that's sitting at 8080. So if we go back to our browser, we can see that at localhost 8080, this is our, our gateway front end, and this is where we're going to be starting. All right, so if you remember from our last video, we customized this home page a little bit. And so we're going to get started with the customization of this just to show you a little bit about how to go about using Bootstrap, which is the CSS library that jhipster uses on its front end. So if you look up and down on this one, it's a little confusing on what what is what. You can obviously read this text here to see, okay, this is this part here, and you can kind of figure out this from the, the code. But what I want to show you is if you open up the developer tools, depending upon your browser, in this version it's Chrome, and so I hit Command Option I on Mac, and it's similar on Windows, but it'll give you the HTML elements on this website. And you can either scroll here and find each element this way, and it'll show you kind of what the highlighted version is on the left based on the tag or the HTML uh, on the right here. And so you can you could do it this way to figure out, okay, where is this code? Or alternatively, if you wanted to figure out, let's say this header and where this header is in the code, you can right click on it and go to inspect. And it'll say that it is a span with ng reflect inner HTML. And that inner HTML is welcome Java hipster. And the value in that tag in that span is welcome comma Java hipster. Okay, so then you can use this information to go into your HTML and figure this out. Now this is going to look a lot different because we have this JHI translate directive that is looking in your I18, which remember from the last video is in your I18 folder under the respective language that you have selected. And in this case, it's going to be in the home JSON. So home dot title is defined in this. We have opened it up home dot title welcome Java hipster. So we're going to eventually want to change that. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take out all of this code and simply delete it. If you do want some reference, I recommend keeping this around because it has some useful uh, clues of how to use jhipster. So for example, how do I use the, the translate tool? Well, it's jhi translate and then all this fun stuff here. And so you can, again, use this as a template and instead of deleting it and recreating it, you can just fill in new values for these, etc. You can see how clicks are handled, how that login works, uh, the router for the register. If you want to register a user, they can click on that, etc. So so I do recommend keeping this around if you're not familiar with Angular 2 or above. The current version at the time of recording is Angular 4, and I have upgraded that on the project, and all the source code is available on the GitHub repository, which I'll link down below this video. So make sure to check that out if you get lost or you just want to see how I did something. It's there. I'm going to highlight all of this, and I'm going to replace it with some code that I already have. Uh, I've already created and we'll go through this in a second. I just didn't want to 
type all this out. But the first thing we're going to do is save it. And then let's go back to our page and refresh this. I don't have Webpack running. And if you remember in the previous video, we had to run, we had to run that in order to live reload the page. So I don't have that yet. Uh, so what instead what you could do if you want is go into your gateway, which is this is running in this tab here, is you can actually shut that down and then rerun either your Gradle or your Maven build process. Now this is a little arduous, so let me go ahead and rerun the gateway via Gradle. And then in a new tab, I am going to run yarn start in order to get that live reload. Now the live reload is going to be run on a different port. So if you remember of our gateway, it's 8080 on here. And so we're gonna need a new tab for the yarn start version. So let me open a new tab here and just make sure that we're in our armory and within the gateway folder, because this is where the yarn start and our front end, our HTML is being run from. So once you're in there, just simply run yarn start. And again, that'll be from our, and again, we covered this in our previous video. So what this is going to do is it's going to actually take our TypeScript files, our, our lib sass files, and compile those all into usable JavaScript and CSS files. So that's what that's going to do. And then anytime we update those files, it's going to do this compile process in the background and only the files that it needs. And the nice thing is that it also jumps and opens up a new tab for us. And so you can see this new our images and a number of other things. And then it's going to open up our um, our our application just on the front end. Okay, so it actually looks like I, I broke this. So let's go back and change this back to the original. And it's gonna rebuild that for us. Okay, so I have a little bit of error, a couple errors in my code. So what we can do is we can highlight that all again. Okay, so this came up blank, which is an interesting illustration of what sometimes happens with the live reload. Now I have a, a small syntax error in my HTML, and so when it rebuilt the uh, the code for this, it basically just just blew up and nothing came up. So if this ever happens to you, don't worry, just go back to the thing that you changed, which was of course for us, the home.component.html. And uh, this somehow in here has a uh, an error in here. This is just old code that I um, commented out. And I guess I can see that this ending div here is not commenting. I used the IDE commenting and apparently it didn't work. Uh, that was the old code that I wanted to keep around from the original homepage. But if you go ahead and save that and then switch back to your uh, your browser, you'll see that this is essentially what we had set up. And if you remember, these are our three column uh, cards and just the different disciplines that I that I teach and I want to uh, give to you guys as, as free tutorials and that sort of thing. So we have mobile development. If you haven't watched those, we have the full stack, which we're doing right now, of course. I already have some 3D modeling tutorials online. And then for the summer, I am teaching uh, at the university a game developer course using both the 3D, using 3D assets that will create, basically using this uh, these tutorials and then using Unreal Engine for that. So I want to link to all those and organize those in a better way so you guys can can follow through and get some professional advice on all these different things that, that I'm involved with. Uh, so the HTML is not exactly pretty in this respect. I have an image here that I haven't copied over and word I would where I would do that is in content images. Right now we just have these three images. Okay, so that's a basic customization on the home page here. Now you could we could spend all day on this, but we're gonna move on to customizing some of the uh, parts that are behind our, our sign in. And so if we do the sign in here, and we're just gonna do admin admin for our login for the admin, you'll see that we now get a new uh, navigation bar at the top here. So this way we are able to add the entities and change these around. So course and description, we don't have anything in here yet, but let's say we go to our, our user. So user user is the default. Now we get a slightly different menu and we still have the ability to edit these entities. Okay, so the one thing that is not showing up here is the admin uh, menu item here when we're signed into our our user account as opposed to our admin account. And so if you look at the code for the navigation, it's going to be in your layouts folder under nav bar 
and let's scroll down here, navbarcomponent.html. So click on that. And now this is quite a bit of code just for a nav bar. And we did cover this before and I kind of pointed out where, where some of this is. But I wanted to show you that if we do a quick uh, command F or control F to do a find and just simply type in role, we can find very quickly that Angular has a directive to show and hide any item that has the admin role for this. And so what this is saying is if I has, well, this has the authority or the user has this authority, namely the role admin uh, authority, then go ahead and show this entire block, this whole list item here, which is quite a few. These are all the items in that admin um, in that admin navigation dropdown. Okay, so we want to do something similar to our uh, ability to create a new discipline. We still want to be able to list out these disciplines for the user. Uh, if it's a regular user logging in, we want to show them that they have the ability to learn uh, web development or back server backend, mobile development, all that stuff that we're going to create, but we do not want them to be able to click this button. So we want to hide this button using JavaScript. And so an easy way to figure out the code for where this guy goes is to right click on it, go to inspect, and it'll open up a uh, the developer tools for this. You can see that we have a span and it says create new discipline. Create new discipline is the, the text, the inner text here. So if I just copy that real quick, I'll show you what I'm going to do. Uh, Command Shift F to do a project wide uh, searching here. And I'm going to paste that in and I'm going to see where this exists. Obviously, it's going to exist in the, uh, the translation JSON, but I'm also looking for that exact button because maybe I don't know where it is in the code. Because maybe you're new to jhipster and you don't really know how things are laid out. Anytime I'm, I'm new to a code base, I use these types of things in order to find out where this is. Um, so here is one file that's called resource dialog uh, component. And you can kind of search through here. But I'll just give you a, a quick hint. And it's going to be in our web app application folder here. And it's going to be actually under entities because all the entity based pages that we uh, have created uh, or jhipster has created for us uh, are going to be in here. And so we have a discipline. And again, our disciplines for the armory are those very top level, those top level hierarchy. And so if, if you look at the application for application architecture and how we defined our, our data model, you could look at that and see kind of how we defined all these things, the discipline, the programs, the lessons, all the resources for each one, how those all link up in our data model. Go check that video out if, if this doesn't make sense for you because it's kind of important. But at a higher level, we have our discipline. And so the main HTML that we're looking for is our discipline component. And so that's going to be the page that we were just on. We're gonna double click on that and it's going to show us the HTML for this. It's pretty short, so you shouldn't really have too much of a, an issue with this. And what this basically does is it sets up a table to display any entities that we have currently in our system for this, for this entity, which is discipline. Uh, so we're not really interested in anything below this, but what we are interested in is this button here. And so again, you can kind of search for this. Uh, I kind of knew where it is already, but this create discipline should showed up in your search had you looked for it a little bit longer than I did. Uh, so the nice thing about this, and by the way, it is translatable. So make sure if you try to change the, uh, the name on this, that you also change it here to actually get it picked up. Uh, so again, we're interested in this button and we want to make sure that this button is only shown for admins. And so if we go back to our nav bar, we can say has authority role admin. So let's go ahead and copy that and go back to our discipline. And I'm simply going to just paste this in anywhere in this, uh, in this button attribute, in this button tag here. Uh, this is for some reason embedded in an H2 tag, uh, which is fine for our purposes. I'm going to refresh that. And now with our live reloading here, we can see that because I am logged in as a user, that that, that button disappeared. However, um, by the way, our, our navigation disappeared and that went into this little hamburger menu or pancake, depending on what you call it. 
Uh, let's expand this so we get our menu back. So again, we are in, you can check this, settings. We're in the user, user um, account. Going back to entities, discipline. This button's hidden. If we go back to course, we haven't changed that file. And so we have to go into every HTML file and hide or show these various buttons. Now for the, the roles, if you have multiple roles that you wanna show or hide, you can actually do that in here. Role admin, if we wanna change that to say, user to uh, get their user's role. You'll see that this comes back eventually once it's rebuilt. And if we go back into our admin user account. Okay, once we go into our admin account, okay, this is this is the admin menu that was disappeared before. Uh, and since an admin is actually included in the role of user, which makes sense, uh, we get this button for that role as well. If but if you know anything about permissions, just hiding, simply hiding this button is not enough to protect our data. We can still have users come in and either through the console here by executing a curl request or uh, basically any way that they can communicate with the backend, they can create a new discipline because we are not enforcing that on the backend. So let's go ahead and uh, fix this up. We just wanna show this to our admin users. Let's save that, go back here, make sure this gets uh, picked up. Okay, so this is still our admin user. Let's test this out for our regular user. Okay, go back to discipline. And indeed, we don't have that anymore. Let's go back to our application and let's enforce this on our backend. So in our backend application, uh, we're actually going to use the, the gateway version of this. Now, I kind of made a mistake when I installed the application. When I used the JDL file to apply my entities to the gateway application microservice and the Armory microservice, it actually created the, uh, the rest it created the back end in my gateway and it actually started using that. So we'll fix that in a future video. Uh, but just to know that we are going to change where our permissions are handled in our gateway application. So I'm in the gateway folder for this. And um, again, if you configure this properly, it would be in your armory. Uh, but again, I made a mistake. So uh, we're going to go into the Java folder under our package name, under web, under rest. And that, this is where our REST endpoints live that our Angular application is communicating to our backend. This is basically the entry point into the rest of the application, namely our services here. Uh, we have DTOs here for our, uh, data transfer objects for the discipline. We can go into that and see all the different fields of our Java object that then gets saved to our database. So for example, we have a, the ability to set programs within our, with our discipline. We get the the price of the discipline, which is hopefully going to be free forever for you guys, but uh, we have that ability to do that. Um, and we have a couple getters and setters and all that fun stuff. This is uh, what's known as a plain old Java object, but with very specific elements in it to be able to be serialized to hibernate. And hibernate is going to be our, um, our basically our POJO to database translation and it does a whole bunch of other things that we won't get into in this video, uh, but just know that it takes our Java objects and saves those directly to the database without any SQL code. So really cool stuff. That's all in our service. That's all in our repository files as well. Uh, folder we have um, somewhere in here, there it is, discipline, to essentially just do a query. This is the actual query um, uh, that I was talking about that is generated for us, but it we have a nice, way of getting all of the relationships of our uh, of our discipline object and then find one or find all variations of those using either a ID if I want to find one here's the ID go and grab it for me and it returns a discipline and then find all will return a list of disciplines so very interesting stuff you can customize a lot of stuff in here that jhipsters and give you out of the box but we really don't need to worry about that at the moment so if we go into rest and we have our discipline resource so if we open that up we can see that everything is going to live at slash api and then slash api we have under that so this is actually declared uh, this mapping is declared on our discipline resource class again this is the uh, the rest endpoint 
And we have a few other objects in here, such as our logger and a um, uh, the actual service that we're going to be using. Again, we talked about the service and a couple other things in here. And so what you're interested in is you can read this, uh, these codes here to de decide what you're actually wanting to do. So with our posts, if you're familiar with REST, this is going to create a new discipline. This is the thing that we're actually going to want to log down. Uh, we also have a put, which is going to usually be a, an update of some sort. And so for this one, it is updating an existing discipline. We also want to lock that down. But for right now, we're, for this video, we're just going to lock it down. It's exactly the same way to lock all these other ones down, pretty much. Uh, the other one is get. We do want to be able to get as a user, so we will not lock this method down. Uh, this, this one simply just says, yeah, go and find all of them and return them. And then if you want to get a specific discipline based on the ID, you pass in an ID. So this is the mapping for that rest endpoint. And how what does this all look like? Well, very easily you can go back into our application and let's go back into our admin. Um, usually what I'll do with these is I'll, I'll open up another browser with our local host. And actually let me... Uh, grab the 9,000, so we have a live update. Uh, what I'll do is I'll log in as an anonymous uh, or incognito mode so that I can log in as multiple users. So I'm gonna sign in as the admin for this one. Okay, so once we have that, we can see that we have two different versions uh, of our, you know, this is using the user account and this is using the admin account. So we have different, we can look at both of these together, which is really, really nice. If we go into the administration, if you remember from one of our first videos, we have our API section using Swagger. Swagger is an awesome tool that everybody should know about if you're doing any kind of, if you're doing any kind of API endpoint stuff. Uh, we have our discipline resource here, if you remember, and we can get, we can look at our get, post, put, delete, and get specific with ID. And if you remember from our previous videos, uh, the one that's post is the, the creation. We can create all this, what this looks like. Now this is defined, this endpoint, if you remember API disciplines is exactly, uh, if we go back up to our post, here it is, is defined as API slash disciplines. Okay, so uh, if you wanted to customize that or change this, you can do it all here, but do recognize that if I change it here, we have other resources such as course that are all defined there. So uh, try not to get too carried away with the customization, but just do realize that if you do change it in one place, it's, it's also defined in other places as well. Uh, so we want to lock this down. And essentially what we want to do is we want to, we don't even want to get to this area here. We may not even want to log it. So for example, if an authorized user is trying to hit this endpoint, uh, we don't even want to log it because if it's if that unauthorized user is hitting it a million times, that's going to just explode our log file and take up memory on the server. And if it fills up our memory, then our application could crash or use resources that we don't want it to. So we don't even want it to log uh, in the first place. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to check uh, using something called the security utils that comes with jhipster and actually it's uh, part of the spring security utilities uh, package library and so let's let's just do some pseudo code here just to show what this looks like and I'm gonna just use the code formatting uh, option command L to make sure that's formatted properly because I have a, a C and C++ background so my formatting is all different from Java so I just do that to make sure the, the format's correct. And in here, again, I'm going to use that security library. So security and then utils. And we this autocomplete comes up here. We're gonna hit enter on that. And the um and the method that we're looking for, if we just hit dot, we have a couple of the ones here is authenticated. So this would just be has the user logged in. Does the user have a particular role? 
or I can get the current user and then explore a, that user a little bit more. Maybe maybe if that user has some particular uh, geographic location or whatever information we attach to that user, we can actually get it here and then compare that to some value. Uh, but the one I'm interested in is the is current role. And again, we have these different roles in here uh, as defined as constants. Now I'm going to type this in. This is just the admin role. And you'll see here that it's going to complain and then it's going to ask me, oh, do you mean the security constants dot admin? Yes, I do. So I'm going to hit the option enter shortcut to include that in my uh, imports at the top of this file. And if you want to know where this is, you can hold down the command key and click on this. And again, it'll show you that file that we had here. These are just all the, uh, the constants that we had set up. So anonymous user, what those actually equal. Okay, so that's just a, a nice tip to jump around in your code. Uh, okay, so what we're asking is if the user is not an admin, so let's put a not symbol here to say that if this returns false, meaning it's it's a user or just a regular user, um, that we actually, we want to come into this if statement. We want to come into this if statement and return to the front end an error message, letting the front end know that we don't have access or that particular user does not have access. So the way to do that in jhipster is to return an object. And that object is going to be a response entity. And we have, uh, you can see here just from the autocomplete, we have a response entity with some kind of templating. And you can go through here, uh, but it's pretty straightforward for what we need. Uh, we have a convenience method. So let me just go ahead and say response entity. And on this response entity class, again, we have these convenience methods to return either a 200 or a 404 or whatever. That's what these uh, these represent. So an okay would be a 200. Uh, but what we want is a bad request. And this is going to use the builder pattern. So on this, we have, we want to actually return headers so that the headers uh, are going to tell the web browser and our application what went wrong. And so we have on here a header util. And I'm sorry if this is a little kind of confusing. If you know anything about um, the, how this works in Spring and Spring Security and all these other uh, technologies and libraries that come with it. This will be a little bit familiar to you. But if not, just uh, go ahead and copy this, what I'm typing in here. And we're going to create a failure alert. And this is going to let the application know that it has failed. And so it's going to ask me for an entity name, a error key, and a default error to pass back. So the entity name is going to be this. Uh, this is just part of the current class that we're in, namely the discipline resource. It's going to then ask for a error key. This is a string. So for this one, it's, uh, it's going to match up with our I18N. So let me just type this in here, not authorized, or excuse me, not authenticated. And the next one is the default message in case that key does not exist in our I18N JSON file. So I'm just gonna simply put this into English. You need to be logged in to perform this action, period, and quotation, and parentheses, semicolon. Okay, and then I actually forgot to uh, include the body. So we put in the headers, and again, this is a builder, so it, it built the headers, and we have to do the body. Uh, so after the last parenthesis here, we do dot and then body, and we don't want anything in the body right now. You could you could have some HTML if you wanted to have an actual thing, but because this is all AJAX, we don't actually need anything in the body. Uh, but again, you could put something in there if you want. Okay, so once I do the body, that error message should go away. And um, that should really be all that we need for right now. And again, you'll want to tie this down. You can have anything in here, such as uh, other roles using uh, an or statement or an and statement. You can customize this. You can also break this out 
uh, if you if you want to pepper this throughout your application instead of repeating this code you can put it into another method uh, but this should uh, suffice for right now so then go ahead and delete that hopefully that made sense to you if not definitely post questions in the comments below uh, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now this doesn't save my application. It doesn't have the ability to live reload that. So I am going to go into, uh, again, this is in our gateway, unfortunately. Um, I misconfigured that. So we're going to have to restart our, our gateway, just running Gradle, or if you chose Maven, we'll rerun that. So because we changed the code, we have to recompile that. And once that recompiles, we're going to go back to our application. We have our two browsers here so that we can test. Okay, so I reloaded the application and using the admin account, I went ahead and just created a new uh, discipline real quick. So you can see the, so you can see that we actually have data in here. And if I go back to our uh, user file, your, our user account here, and just go ahead and refresh this, just make sure we have the latest code. Uh, we can see that now that entity comes up here. So that's all good and grand. Now we have not locked down our uh, our editing, so our put rest call, but uh, we do have that button missing. And so maybe we do want to allow the user to edit, but not create that sort of thing. So very specific permissions. Uh, you have all the control in the world over this type of stuff. So really, really powerful, really easy to configure. Uh, but let's go ahead and re-add this button using the, uh, the JavaScript front end. So we go back to our home component and Oh, not our home component, our uh, disciplined component with that button. We want to unhide that button for the user just to test out the back end because we want to make sure that this is fully tested. Actually, uh, let me just go ahead and delete that whole uh, directive. Hit save. Go back here. Hit refresh. Um, usually, I don't have to re refresh, but just out of habit, I do that. Okay, so here's our create new discipline button. And uh, yeah, for some reason, the uh, labels aren't showing up for this uh, form right now, but that's okay, we don't need it. Uh, essentially, this is the title, uh, this is the description, this is the weight, which we'll just put as one, uh, and then this is any uh, uh, programs that are in that discipline, which we don't have any here, so it's not gonna put in there. And then we save this, and it's going to uh, basically do nothing because if we go to our console, you can see that our server responded on the API slash disciplines rest endpoint seven times, clicked a couple times, that it was failing, uh, gave a 400 bad request. So again, you can make this a, uh, a 401 uh, for unauthorized. So let me go ahead and close this and refresh it. And just to show you that nothing was created. So there you go. And then the admin, again, we don't have anything in here. Um, let me just refresh this page just to make sure. Not that anything changed, but go ahead and recreate this. And I'm just going to do test, test. Now, again, this is a weight, so it's a number, and there's no programs in here. Hit save. And for some reason, our Ajax is not working, but if we refresh this, there it is. So we know that the admin can add based on the back end, but our user cannot. And so Again, you have to make sure that the, the front end reflects the permissions that the user is allowed to use. And then you have to, on the back end, enforce those permissions, whether you want it to create, to edit, or delete. All of these different endpoints that we have for our course resource uh, allow us to do this just for this entity. So again, create. We have this one for updating and getting all the courses, getting a specific course, or deleting a course with an ID. And again, you have to lock down every single one of these. And if you never want anybody to delete this, you can actually delete this entire method here or comment it out. So I hope you guys found this video useful. Uh, we'll definitely be continuing the series on the front end and the back end as I develop out the courses and allow you guys to log in and get all this really useful tutorials and everything that I teach at the university, uh, the game the game development course, the mobile development course, uh, front end, back end stuff like we're doing in this series. I'm going to try to put that all in one area so you guys can find it easier than searching through YouTube playlists.
So hopefully you found this tutorial useful. If you would like to see more tutorials from Electronic Armory, make sure you subscribe, like this video, and hit us up on our website, Facebook, or Twitter. Links are in the description below and on the channel's YouTube page. Thanks, we'll see you next time.